Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have a Dollar Tree Farmhouse Neutral Christmas DIY sign for you. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button. And then you just wanna tap that bell and all, that way you're notified every single time I upload. And with all that being said, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. And with all that being said, let's start off with three of these Dollar Tree signs. I start off by taking off the hangers with my staple pull and then because the front of these signs were just kind of peeling off, I did just go ahead and peel it off the rest of the way. I then flipped them over and sanded down the spots where the staples were connected to the back and then I fill in those holes with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. To speed up the drying process, I just took my blow dryer on high heat and I just blow dried them for a couple minutes and then I went in with my zip sander and sanded those down smooth. I then just vacuumed up the mess because the, that kind of dust like drives me nuts while I'm trying to work. And then for the top of this sign, all I did was just take my roller and I marked the middle. I then took my roller kind of down on an angle on each side and drew lines. Um, I did the first line and then I connected it at the bottom. That way the second line I could make sure was going to look uniform on both sides. And then to cut this down, all I did was take my straight edge and my utility knife and I just put my straight edge on that line and then scored it a couple times with my utility knife. And then I was able to just bend it and then cut it from the back and then clean up the edges. For the side pieces of this, I just laid it on this side of it. I marked where I wanted it and then I repeated this step with my utility knife. To smooth things out a little bit. Also take note that sometimes when you score it and then bend it backwards and cut it from the back, it cuts uneven so you do just have to cut the edge off. Sometimes I use my scissors, sometimes I cut it down with my knife, it just depends. But after that I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I give all three pieces a good couple coats to cover all of that brown. A while back I had grabbed this artist palette from Dollar Tree and showed it in a haul and I haven't used it yet until this video and I have to say you guys I love this thing it is so convenient to have so I pulled it out and I put some Nimbus and some mineral Waverly chalk paint on the artist palette. I then go in with my bigger chip brush that I get from Home Depot. I believe they're about 97 cents a piece. And I just randomly dab in either color and dry brush all the way down the middle of our sign. Now I get a lot of questions on my dry brush technique a lot. So I am just going to let this clip play here for just a second so you guys can see kind of the way that I do it. Next, I go in with the mineral as well as the Nimbus, kind of going back and forth and just taking the edge of my chip brush and going in a circular motion to give the effect of kind of like a knot in the wood. I then go in with some of my ink Waverly chalk paint and just dry brush around the edges as well as the knots just to make all of those details stand out. 
Next, I take the two side pieces and I lay them side by side and then I cut a piece of contact paper to fit both. Now, Dollar Tree sells a ton of contact paper. I just have a huge roll of this, so I'm going to use what I have on hand. Don't come for me in the comments saying, oh, this isn't a Dollar Tree project, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear it. I use what I have on hand. It is what it is. So, um, I just cover my two pieces and I do this side by side that way I know that both sides are going to look perfectly even so I just lay out my my contact paper and I start by pulling the backer sheet away from the contact paper if you try to pull the contact paper from the backing sheet a lot of times it will rip um, so I have found that that was really helpful when using co contact paper and then once I had it covered, then I go in with my utility knife and I just separated both the pieces and then I folded the pieces around the edges. Next, I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I just kind of dry brush some white streaks on either side of the middle sign. Next, to attach this, I flip it over and I use some hot glue and large popsicle sticks down the seams holding it together while the glue dries to make sure that it stays together nicely. Next, I use those same large popsicle sticks to cut down pieces for the roof on the top peak as well as the side peaks. For stain, I used my Antique Wax by Waverly and I just used a regular paintbrush to give those, again, that stained look. Once I cut the edges of the top house peak then I go in with my hot glue and I glue those pieces down I also glued the side pieces down as well I then took one of these little buckets from Dollar Tree that you can get in like the party section or the wedding section and I just cut that in half with my tin snips after I pulled off the little handle I was actually pretty shocked at how well this cut. So the easiest way I found to cut this with my tin snips was to cut down one side and then cut down the other side and then kind of bend it and then cut the bottom from there. Once I had both of those cut as well as the little edges cut off where the piece was holding the um, handle, then I lay my pieces down on a piece of foam board and I cut out or I trace the back and then cut a piece of foam board out that way we can cover the back I then was just very very generous with my hot glue and I attached those pieces to the back of our half buckets I then gave them both three good coats of my Mineral Waverly chalk paint, allowing each coat to dry in between coats. Don't forget the inside and the outside edges as well. And then I go in with that same chip brush that we used earlier and my antique wax, and I generously dry brush that antique wax on both of our half buckets. 
And I am just so sorry, not sorry to the ones who don't like dry brushing, but I love the way that those little half buckets look with that dry brushing. It looks so rustic. It really just looks like a piece of wood. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. But I took some greenery that I got from a little antique shop and I just kind of pulled it apart. And then I glued two of the pieces of greenery together to make it look like a little Christmas tree. I then hot glued those inside of the buckets and then to cover the inside of the bucket that way you couldn't see it I just took a little bit of reindeer moss and kind of just shoved that in to make sure that you could not see that white like I said Next, I took a piece of this wood from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has all kinds of different wood shapes nowadays so you can definitely find them in the crafter square section even the crappy dollar trees have the crafter square section i know that a lot of it, a lot of them stink i have to travel to several so trust me i understand your your pain but anyway for these steps i took a small popsicle stick from dollar tree or i guess this is considered like a medium size and then i took a large popsicle stick from walmart and i just cut a um, bigger step at the bottom and then a smaller step at the top and then for the windows i kind of played around with different sizes Ultimately, in the end, I used all of my skinny sticks or coffee stirs, whatever you want to call them, and I just laid out my pieces, marked them as I go for windows. And I stained those as well with the antique wax. Now to assemble the windows, I started off using my hot glue on the edges of these skinny sticks and that does work. And the way that I got that to work was I used the top piece and glued on each side. I laid it down and then took the side pieces and kind of just pushed it up into the hot glue. And then once that dried, then I moved on to the next bottom piece. I quickly realized that if I just flipped this over, I could lay my pieces down and then just hot glue the cross beams, if that makes sense. Now I wanted to put like window boxes at the top or I don't even really know what these are called but I kind of wanted to put a decoration on the top of the windows so I took a large popsicle stick and just kind of laid it on the top of my window to see how long I wanted the edges and then marked it. I then just took my roller and made lines on kind of like a V. Now to cut this out, I found that the easiest way that this does not split is you have to basically chop it really small cuts like chop, 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 if that makes sense. I made two of those and then I painted both of those with my chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. So for the windows, I took a piece of scrapbook paper and I just kind of measured the back and then cut those out. But please don't make the same mistake that I did. I wanted the back of these to look like the window pieces were kind of cut out. So I wanted the windows to be white. Well, I ended up putting the pattern side towards the front. <laughs> so don't make the same mistake I did. Here it goes. And then I'm like, shoot. So I just pulled it off. No big deal. And I cut another piece and then glued that down on the right side this time for both windows.
I wanted to show you guys for the door. You can do like a cool accent door. I ended up not using that scrapbook paper, but I did think that it would look pretty cool. So if you are living on the edge and you want your church door to look marbled, then get yourself some scrapbook paper and I think that it would look really awesome. But for my door, what I did was made a mark in the middle and then I drew three boxes on either door. So um, two at the top, two rectangles in the middle, and then two at the bottom. I then go over my lines with my Sharpie paint pen in black. I hated the door handles that I drew on there, so I sanded those off and just put dots for door handles. And now comes the fun part, assembling everything. So for the steps, I didn't want them to be flat. I wanted them to look cohesive and 3D with the rest of the items. So I just attached two skinny sticks to the back of each, and then I glued all the pieces down with some hot glue. Now, I, this was missing a little something at the top, so originally I was going to use my Believe transfer, but it was a little bit too big, so I came across this All is Calm, All is Bright, and I loved the wording, so I did just transfer that wording on with my black chalk paste, and this transfer is on sale right now, so you can probably get the paste and the transfer for just a couple bucks, and I'll leave the link in my link tree in the description box. Just look for the wording that says all of the links are now in one place. So once I had that transferred on, then I take two jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart. I cut those down and I attach those in the shape of a cross. And then once again, I stain it with my antique wax. To make this cross stand out and give it a little bit of dimension, I just took a little bit of my Ink Waverly chalk paint on, an end, on the end of the brush that I just used and I just dry brushed some of that paint all over the cross. Again, no rhyme or reason and dry brushing is a personal preference so if you don't like that then you can skip that step and then I attach the cross to the top with some hot glue in the back. I then took a small wreath that I got from Hobby Lobby, and this is a grapevine wreath. I attached some of that same greenery that we used for the trees onto the mini wreaths with onto the mini wreath with some hot glue, and then I attached it to the sign with some hot glue as well, and attached a little bow from Dollar Tree to the top of my wreath, just a simple neutral colored bow, and I just absolutely love the way that this 3D sign turned out. I love that it's neutral and there's not really bold pops of color. Sometimes I love the neutral for Christmas, sometimes I love the bold pops of color. I feel like for this year I'm going a little bit more neutral, so this sign is a little bit more my speed for this year but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think let me know if you're going to be making this sign if nobody has told you today you are absolutely gorgeous and worthy you are special you are loved i love you with all my heart and soul and i appreciate you please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already you might as well become part of my crafty family if you have made it this far leave me an orange comment Leave me an orange heart in the comments down below and I will enter you into a giveaway. I'll leave all the information in the description box. So, I love you guys so much. Don't forget to share it with your family and friends and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!